Now, from the news team that's covering the Carolinas, this is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Saturday morning. Brackets busted. History made in Charlotte with a stunning upset. UMBC! 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 Yeah, UMBC, the Cinderella story everyone is talking about this morning and the reason no one saw it coming. And right now we're using Charlotte's only local radar to track showers that are pushing into our area. And we're using FutureCast to pinpoint when those showers will arrive and how long they'll stick around. I also want to give you a live look outside from Uptown Charlotte. You can see the building is lit up green for St. Patty's Day. It is going to be a very busy weekend, especially busy Saturday. Good morning. I'm Blaine Tollison. And I'm meteorologist Vicki Graff. And a little bit of rain you might be uh, might have to deal with today. Exactly. So if you do have plans for St. Patrick's Day, grab that rain gear just in case. This is a wide view as to what's approaching across the Carolinas right now. However, taking a closer look with Charlotte's only radar, you can see not everybody is getting that rainfall right now. In fact, most of it has been in the mountains and the foothills so far today. Taking a closer look, this batch of rain, it's now east of Morganton, south of I-40. This is moving off to the east. Also, a lone shower on top of Taylorsville. Putting a tracker on this, that's heading towards Brookford by around 750, Hickory by 751, and Cat Square by 754. More light rain in the mountains. This is falling as rain, but temperatures are starting to cool off just slightly, and some of this might not even be reaching the surface, and that's because the air has been so dry. This is right on top of Banner Elk, Boone, Blowing Rock, and this batch is moving northeast, heading towards West Jefferson by 741, and then Jefferson by 748. If you do have plans today, maybe heading to the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Uptown, grab that rain gear. There will be a few showers passing through Charlotte, I'd say before 1 o'clock. Then through the afternoon, we'll see a few breaks of sunshine, and another round will approach later tonight. I'll advance feature cast coming up to show you when that will arrive and how quickly it clears out. Blaine? Breaking overnight, brackets busted, and if you didn't stay up late to watch the number one seed University of Virginia take on the 16th seeded University of Maryland, Baltimore County, you missed a historic upset. It is the first time ever that a 16th seed is knocked off a number one, and it wasn't even close. UMBC won 74-54. Virginia entered the game having won 31 of its 33 games. By comparison, UMBC had 10 losses, and it needed to win the America East Conference Tournament just to qualify. Odds makers had Virginia as one of the favorites to win it all. At Channel 9 was outside the Spectrum Center as stunned Virginia fans spilled into the streets. We also found a handful of UMBC fans, including one proud father who got to watch his son make history. I want to cry. It's just amazing. I'm so proud of my son, so proud of this team. They all worked hard to get there. Each and every one of them had an important role, and they did it tonight. Pretty cool moment for them. UMBC now moves on to play Kansas State in the second round showdown on Sunday. Thousands of people are in town this weekend for the NCAA games and St. Patrick's Day celebrations. The games co coincide with the 22nd annual St. Patrick's Day parade and one of the biggest bar crawls in the country. It could bring more than 30,000 people uptown. The general manager at the French Quarter Tavern in Uptown says he's ready for one of the busiest weekends of the year. Every person that's on our roster, we have working for us. Police have been out talking to bar owners and their staff to make sure they don't overserve customers during the parties. College basketball fans and partiers will be able to take the Blue Line extension into Uptown for today's festivities. The nine mile ride into Uptown takes about 25 minutes. And Channel 9 was there for the inaugural run, and the trains were packed with students excited about the direct connection into Uptown. And the Ferris 220 round trip, students get to ride for free, sort of. UNCC is charging them a $25 per semester fee, but it gives them unlimited rides. Now, riders may be enjoying the Blue Line extension, but traffic patterns near the tracks are causing a lot of confusion for drivers. Channel 9 crews camped out at a North Charlotte intersection to see if there were any issues. We saw about a dozen vehicles stopped well over the lines that mark where the crossing gates come down. In one case, a driver had to back up to avoid getting hit by this crossing arm. And CATS officials even warned that one wrong move could be deadly. The number one issue uh, that, that we want the public to know is to pay attention to the new uh, traffic patterns along North Tryon. An engineer will monitor intersections for the next 20 days. 
The man accused of shooting and killing a York County deputy and injuring three other officers is in the Spartanburg County Jail without bond. Eyewitness News reporter Stephanie Tinoco was there as the surviving officers showed up for his court appearance. It certainly was an emotional moment as the three surviving officers and their family sat just feet away from the accused gunman. Are you Christian Thomas McCall? Yes, sir. For the second time, 47 year old Christian McCall faced a judge two months after investigators say he ambushed four York County officers. Just released from the hospital and extradited from Mecklenburg County, a judge formally charged McCall with nine counts, including murder and denied bond. You have nine charges against you. Arrest warrants we just obtained say on January 16th, McCall attacked his wife while their 15 year old was inside the home. Investigators have said McCall ambushed the officers who responded, shooting four of them and killing Detective Mike Doty. Warrants also reveal McCall had two firearms and a knife on him. Tonight, the judge ordered McCall to sign a document promising not to have any contact with his wife, the officer victims, or their families. He's basically acknowledging the fact that you are going to stay away from the victims. During his hearing, McCall requested a public defender who told us in terms of significance, this is the biggest case he's had. We'll review the discovery and, and figure out where we need to go from there. And the York County Sheriff, who attended both of today's hearings, telling us this is a difficult process. You know, we're obviously have suffered a, a tremendous tragedy and a, and, a, and a deep wound that doesn't heal uh, very quickly. McCall is expected to be in court again the first week of May, and the district attorney's office says that a lot of work still needs to be done before deciding whether or not to seek the death penalty in this case. Reporting in York County, Stephanie Tinoco, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Today, two Latino activist groups will hold a community forum to discuss issues surrounding the upcoming sheriff's race. Action NC and Comunidad Colectiva will have a panel discussion on the controversial 287G program and other topics. If you're interested in attending, today's forum starts at noon at the Midwood International Center on Central Avenue. Current Sheriff Erwin Carmichael is being challenged by former CMPD homicide detective Gary McFadden and former CMPD officer Anton Ensley. Sheriff Carmichael fought for the 287G program, saying it takes murderers, rapists, and pedophiles off the street. Both of his challengers say they do not support the program. Overnight, President Trump took to Twitter calling the firing of ex-FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe a, quote, great day for the hardworking men and women of the FBI. Attorney General Jeff Sessions fired McCabe just two days before he was set to retire. McCabe has been accused of misleading investigators at the Justice Department. Now, he would have been eligible for early retirement and to receive his pension on Sunday. Now, that could be in jeopardy. McCabe says his firing is part of the Trump's administ Trump administration's ongoing war on the FBI. Overnight, crews in Sweetwater, Florida, worked to dismantle a pedestrian bridge that collapsed, killing six people. You could hear them chipping away as that effort, uh, recovery effort continued overnight. And Florida's Tra Department of Transportation says an engineer, an engineer left a voicemail two days before the collapse to say some cracking had been found at one of the concrete spans. But that voicemail wasn't heard until Friday because the employee was out of the office. A Lenore man is facing felony charges after police say he robbed a Granite Mountain convenience store at gunpoint. Deputies arrested Isaiah Simmons after a traffic stop Thursday. He's charged with robbery with a dangerous weapon and false imprisonment. Police say that that's him seen on surveillance video at Poppy's Market in Granite Falls robbing the store. Simmons is being held on a $102,000 bond. New this morning, the Highway Patrol has released the name of the driver who died when his taxi hit another driver in Troutman last week. Troopers say John Hannon of Troutman died after he crossed the center line on Old Mountain Road near Mary Duke Lane between Troutman and Statesville. The other driver was seriously injured and flown to Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center in Winston-Salem, and his condition is not known. Polygraph tests show a man once implicated in the disappearance of a 17-year-old in Myrtle Beach is lying. Timothy Taylor told the FBI that he didn't know who was involved in Brittany Drexel's disappearance and that he had never seen her in person, but... The polygraph test showed deception when he was asked those questions again. Drexel was on spring break in 2009 when she disappeared. 
Fire officials say pine straw being used as mulch helped spread this massive fire through a Lancaster County retirement community. Three homes in Sun City were destroyed, and that was Thursday. Four others were damaged. Investigators say a lit cigarette started the fire and pine straw helped accelerate it. Everything will burn, but the, the uh, wood-based mulches, the bark-based mulches, tend to smolder more than flash and, and, and cause a really hot fire really quick. Three years ago, management at Sun City Lakes gave residents a choice to replace the pine needles with bark. Well, no one won the Mega Millions jackpot overnight, pushing the jackpot to an estimated $377 million for the next drawing on Tuesday. Saturday night's Powerball is even higher at $455 million. It's the eighth largest jackpot in history. And uh, you can get those winning numbers on TV64 or on WSOCTV.com. 710, now we're going to take a live look outside from our Speedway camera. Things looking pretty clear from this angle. It doesn't look like the roads are wet at this hour, but you can see those clouds overhead. I want to get right over to meteorologist Vicki Graff. She has more on today's forecast in Severe Weather Center 9. And you can see from that view, the clouds are starting to build in. That's all ahead of a few showers that we could see this morning. It is a mild start with 49 in Charlotte, 38 in Lincolnton, 45 in Hickory, and low 40s for the mountains. I grab a rain jacket if you're going to be heading out early. There are a lot of events going on around town. You'll notice it will be cooler than it was yesterday. We're about two degrees cooler right now in Charlotte, but close to 20 degrees cooler in Wadesboro and Morganton as well. Going through the afternoon, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds, and then we'll see that first round of showers today, I'd say before midday, and then later this afternoon, still keeping a small chance for downpours. There will be another round of some storms that will roll through later tonight. I'll show you how long that will last coming up. Blaine? On Monday, Charlotte City Council will decide on a new market in Noda. The open air market would be next to the Davidson Street Public House, and it would take the place of the restaurant's eight parking spaces. Now, this certainly won't do anything to help drivers already fighting to find a place to park in Noda. Last month, uh, as a solution, the city did take feedback from residents asking if they want full-time parking enforcement uh, meters in time-restricted spaces, and that would mean you have to pay for spaces that are currently free. A Charlotte three-year-old battling a rare disorder. At 745, the ordinary symptoms his parents didn't notice and how they learned about the problem. A local woman is speaking out, saying she was sexually assaulted at JCSU nearly 20 years ago. At, 70, at 7.30, the reason she says the time is right for her to break her silence. More canine concerns on United Airlines. Next, the third incident involving a dog and the way it affected every passenger on the plane. Like us on Facebook to follow the latest breaking news, top stories, and weather. To join in on the conversation, log on to WSOCTV.com and click on the Facebook icon at the top of the page.